Welcome to Halo the Master Chief Collection, the panel at RTX. Uh, I'm super excited that all of you have joined us today during your lunch hour. We're really excited to be here, and we hope you're having an awesome RTX so far. We've got a lot of awesome stuff to talk about today, including Halo 2 Anniversary, as well as the entire Master Chief Collection. So I want to get started right away by introducing everyone who's up here on stage. My name is Andy Dodinsky. Most of my friends call me Bravo, and I'm community manager for Halo at 343 Industries. To my left is Dennis Rees. He is lead producer on Halo the Master Chief Collection, and also worth noting that Dennis served as lead producer on Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. Yes, thank you. Thank you. To his left is Max Schlager. He's lead designer on Halo the Master Chief Collection. <laughs> to his left is Max Holberman, the original multiplayer and online design lead for Halo 2. <laughs> Max is also president of Certain Affinity, who is Austin's own top game development studio. Yeah. <laughs> and to Max's left is David Mertz, who is lead multiplayer designer on Halo 2 Anniversary. So when I was first asked to moderate this panel, I got really excited because not only do we have four awesome guys uh, on stage with us here, but they're also building some really great experiences within the Master Chief Collection. Uh, so to start off, Dennis, I'd love to just talk about everything that's packed into this game. Yeah, there's so much here. So, you know, when we started thinking about Master Chief Collection, it's just we wanted the entire Master Chief saga. So you're gonna get Halo CE Anniversary, you're gonna get Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 4, as well as the uh, you know, live action digital series executive produced by Ridley Scott called Halo Nightfall. And uh, then lastly, but not, not least, is the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta. So there's a ton of content in here and we're really excited for it to, to come out this November. Yeah, I think actually we're ready to uh, jump right into things. And uh, Max, I think we have a build of the Master Chief Collection running right now on Xbox One. Can you walk us through some of the philosophy behind the master menu and, and some of the menus themselves? Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and switch over let's to go ahead that. And switch it over. And... Cool. Get a, get a controller over here. Let's get him a controller. All right, Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have audio? Yes, okay, magic. we're good. Great. Thank you, Andy. So, I want to talk through uh, some of the ways in which we're bringing in nostalgia as well as a unique look for the unified menu for this particular game. So, one of the subtle touches that you'll notice as you browse the menus in the game is you'll get your music cues from each game as you browse Halo 1, Halo 2, and you'll also notice the backgrounds, again, will be sensitive to the game that you're looking at at the particular time that you're moving through the menu there. So again, they change each time. And this is going to be reflected in each part of the game, so campaigns, multiplayer, and something a bit unique for each one. So just a way we're trying to make the experience of browsing Master Chief Collection really exciting and uh, bring you some of that nostalgia. Now we talked about playlists before. I wanted to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind how we thought about some of these playlists. And specifically, we've talked about cross game. In this case, though, let's talk about the particular game that we're doing our anniversary treatment for. So Halo 2, here's a sampling of some of the playlists that we're thinking about for this particular game. So. In the past, uh, some folks who really love a, a hardcore challenge, they would do things uh, like the Lazo campaign, for example. Now, that's a particular configuration where you've got the game on Legendary, all skulls on, and uh, people know how to set that up. We wanted to curate this and make it something that basically is, is more discoverable for everybody out there, and then also to recognize the achievement uh, associated with doing that. So we're thinking of a number of different ways to reward people for playing through that playlist. There's some other ones on here that are a, a good example of ways in which we think about it, because we think about these in terms of themes. And so one of the great things about Halo 2, you play it as the Arbiter, you play it as Master Chief. So we actually have a combination of levels that plays specifically for the Arbiter back to back. 
um, that's a new experience because if you remember in the original campaign, you actually were doing them interspersed from one to the next. So uh, that's a pretty cool way to think about it. And the flip side of that, of course, is the Master Chief journey, which, uh, you know, again, it's those particular chief levels back to back. Now, another collection that we have here is fan favorites, just some of the maps that missions that people particularly uh, enjoyed playing on this one. And there's going to be a variety of these types of playlists that call out basically uh, some of the particular highlights of the game and uh, great moments in them. Now, another key piece to remember for Halo 2 Anniversary is uh, for the first time ever, we're going to have online co-op play through this campaign. Uh, so that's, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, I'd also like to speak a little bit to how we think about curating the multiplayer experience. Uh, with 100 multiplayer maps, a lot of great game types available to you, how are you going to find the best of the best? So here's a sampling of uh, some of the multiplayer playlists that we're thinking about. And you're going to see a wide range of content here. Now, one thing I do want to clarify is you notice when I go through these, there are some that are dedicated to each title. So yes, there is one for Halo 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and Halo 2 Anniversary. <laughs> as well as uh, some cross-game ones. And there's a kind of a few different ways we think about these cross-game ones. So in one particular case, we have a very broad range of content here, right? So Team Slayer, this particular uh, multiplayer playlist has a wide variety of content in it. <laughs> nice. Now that's to get back to some of the spirit of what it felt like to be in multiplayer at a time when, you know, while we will have voting, we want to make sure that a lot of those maps that maybe, you know, didn't get as much discoverability back in the day, will bubble them up. And, you know, having four games worth of content there is a great way to really bring that, that vibe back to these playlists. Another thing that we think about is rotational playlists. Uh, so in this particular case, we have a rotation of, you know, some of the best swap maps across these particular games. And you'll notice this particular list is shorter than the other one because, again, these are curated to be specifically the best maps for SWAT across all these different games. So you may be wondering, how exactly, you know, do you, do you have a seamless experience as you go from one of these titles to the next because things have changed over time, right? Dual wielding, uh, <coughs> equipment loadout, sprint, all these different things. So one of the things that we thought about in unifying this package is our universal control schemes. So we haven't talked about this, and this is something that we wanted to give you a brief demo of, but you can customize your controls for each title, for each option individually, and we have the option uh, for these things to, for example, apply a setting like, let's say, your sensitivity. And with the press of a button, you can apply that setting to every single title in the collection. The other cool thing about this is we have universal control schemes. So here's an example of one for you. And in this particular case, the goal with these is to unify what an action, um, how that action occurs across games. And we did a lot of digging on this. And we really feel like we have a number of control schemes that are going to work across all the games. That said, again, if you really want to get in there and you know, have a custom one for a particular game, you're always welcome to override that. You can have everything uh, customized per title for all these options, uh, however you like. So that's, uh, that's how we think about that. Awesome. Thank you, Max. So something that we mentioned uh, on stage at E3 is the Halo 2 anniversary is, get, excuse me, Halo 2 is getting that full anniversary treatment. And Dennis, I want to talk a little bit about what, both in terms of campaign uh, and multiplayer, what that means for Halo 2. Well, when we thought, started thinking, uh, you know, like the anniversary treatment, we really looked back to Halo 1 anniversary and what did we do there. And right off the bat, from a campaign perspective, obviously you just need to remaster the campaign. So we work with Saber Interactive again, who worked on Halo 1 anniversary, and they're completely remastering all the graphics, and, and it looks incredible. Additionally, we also wanted to do some of the other uh, fan favorite things that were like skulls. We added tons of skulls to Halo 2 Anniversary. So yes, exactly. All of, the, all of the existing skulls that were there are still there, but then we added a ton. So there's actually over 30 skulls that are available now in Halo 2 Anniversary. Additionally, we really thought about you know, the audio. The audio is completely remastered in Halo 1 Anniversary. We wanted to do that again, and we're doing it in a very big way, and I'm excited to talk more about that at Comic-Con, so get excited, because there's some really cool stuff we're doing on the audio side. 
Additionally, terminals. Now, terminals in Halo 1 anniversary, we hid them all throughout the game, and then when you'd get to a terminal, you would unlock a video and learn more about the franchise. Well, we're doing a, a lot, you know, a lot of the same thing here, and you're going to be able to, to learn the story, the backstory of the Arbiter. So that's something I think that everyone's going to be really excited. And then also Blur. So in cinematics, you know, telling the, the Halo 2 story, it's just a, very, a ton, a huge story. <laughs> and there's like over 50 minutes of cinematics. So we contacted Blur Studios, who actually have worked with us before. They, they worked on Halo Wars. So if you're familiar with the Halo Wars cinematics, it, yeah, it, it's pretty incredible. And Blur has been working with us to remaster all of those cinematics. So they're going to look incredible. Um, as far as multiplayer, really, First things first, we had to make sure we included the original multiplayer, something we didn't do with Halo 1 Anniversary, so we definitely made up for that here, and we included the original multiplayer. Yeah. But we knew Halo 2 was so well known for its multiplayer, we wanted to do something different, something unique. And so we contacted Max, uh, Max Overman from there at Certain Affinity, and we asked him for some help. And you know, our, our major goals were number one, we really wanted to expand upon that sort of core Halo 2 experience. Um, we, we wanted to, to make sure that whatever we created was true to how Halo 2 was back then. And then also we wanted to create the definitive version of each of the remastered maps, as we're remastering six multi, of the most nostalgic multiplayer maps, and we wanted to make sure that we stay true to, the, to how those played and how they feel. And we didn't just want this to be a remake, right? We wanted this to be an upgrade, and that was really important for us. And so I know Certain Affinity and Max especially spent a lot of time making sure that would be the case. Cool, thank you, Dennis. One, one thing, since we do have Max Hopeman with us, uh, I'd love to take kind of a step back and, and look uh, at Halo 2 and, and why we're here celebrating the 10-year anniversary. I mean, Halo 2 was such a pivotal game, I think, for everyone on stage. For me, I can say there's no way I'd be up here and, and working on Halo if it wasn't for Halo 2 and, and my career. And I mean, year after year, it was the most popular game on Xbox Live. Uh, and for many people, it was also an introduction you know, to online multiplayer, uh, not just on console, but I think all up. Max, can you tell us a bit about how you got involved specifically in Halo 2 development? Yeah, sure. Um, so let's see. Uh, first of all, uh, just a quick side note. I just want to uh, commend these guys for the uh, effort of pulling together all these different games with this uh, unified UI and matchmaking, all these things. It's, uh, when they told me what they were planning when we first started this project, I told them they were crazy. So, uh, but it's awesome. And it's we're really still crazy, Max. So. Still <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, so this, uh, this particular project has a, a ton of uh, significance for me. Um, Halo 2, it's a, there's a ton of nostalgia, I guess you'd say. Um, I started, uh, I was actually at Bungie uh, before Microsoft acquisition days, um, working on the early Halo games, um, but just helping out a little bit on the side. Um, after we got acquired, uh, I ended up starting up the community team at Bungie. So I was running all, uh, you know, all the community relations type stuff that Bungie does. And then my group was also handling the user interface design, so we did the user interface design for uh, Halo 1. Um, and all along, all those years, I kept telling them that I want to do multiplayer design, and I really want to be a, you know, really want to be a designer. Um, so I, I don't, I think this is common knowledge. I don't know how much it's been talked about, but what we actually shipped for multiplayer for Halo 1 was not what we were originally imagining for Halo. Um, it was kind of something that we crammed in real quick at the last minute. Uh, didn't have a lot of time, um, and you know what we had planned was very different, and uh, it, it was really impressive how crazy popular it was and how fun it was in LAN parties. And honestly, it kind of caught us by surprise a little bit. So when we started on Halo 2, and I was um, I was actually still on the community team until about six months in, and the team is basically they were regretting that um, the dev team was regretting that they hadn't shipped the original big you know, big mega round based um, 32 player, you know, type thing that we had originally envisioned. So that was the plan for Halo 2 multiplayer is that it was going to be this big thing that we were, I think we were calling it warfare internally. Um, and for about six months, that, that was the plan. And I kept telling everyone, uh, but everyone, everyone's playing Halo 1 style, this arena combat, you know, this real fast paced small maps. Um, land party type experience and everyone's having a great time. Shouldn't we just take that online? And no, 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 we don't want to do that. We, we do something <laughs> new. We want to do something new. That's old. So uh, I, I just kept making a lot of noise about it. And uh, eventually, 
Um, I guess uh, Alex and Jason, who are the two founders of Bungie, came to me and they said, hey, you know, we think we, think we should have the small scale stuff. You've convinced us. Um, why, don't you, why don't you take care of that? We'll call that the party game. That'll be for land parties, and then we'll go do this big you know, warfare thing separately. So, okay. So then I, then I fought really hard to get one dedicated resource, which was Chris Carney, one uh, environment artist. <laughs> so finally got one dedicated resource, and Carney and I went to town. Well, meanwhile, this big, epic multiplayer thing was supposedly happening. Uh, I was still on the community team. So fast forward about six months, and uh, we, had, we had actually laid a groundwork for the multiplayer for the game. A bunch of the maps that you guys uh, know and love, actually, we had planned out and even implemented in their kind of early forms and uh, designed, and we were playing it, and we were having a great time. And you know, six months later, the big mega game was no further than a single piece of paper. Um, so eventually, we, uh, you know, they came to me and they said, hey, we're cutting warfare, and you know, you're going to be in charge of multiplayer, and you know, you're doing everything. So I ended up being in charge of all the everything multiplayer design-wise, online design, um, you, know, you, you name it. So that's, that's kind of how I got sort of full-time involved in uh, development. Cool. Yeah, let's talk about some of the first things um, that, that you did on, on once Halo 2, kind of this arena multiplayer was locked. Um, what was the first onset? Was I mean, was it designing those maps? What was the first thing that really was the first step? Yeah, you know, it was funny because a lot of uh, Halo 2 was born out of this sort of desperation of just having me and, you know, Chris Carney and that was it. We really didn't have a lot of resources. I didn't even have a dedicated programmer for uh, gameplay related stuff. So we just knew that there was, there was really no room for error with such a small group. So we laid out our plans. I think originally we laid out our sort of master plan. We need X number of maps that do, you know, serve these groups. It, it, it was interesting because on the large scale, the really big stuff, 16 player, we didn't actually think we needed much for that um, because we had, uh, we thought, oh, the warfare is going to take care of that. So we tended to focus on the smaller scale maps and some of the kind of medium sized maps um, and a lot of the arena maps. So yeah, just in our early designs, I, I put together a document that laid out all of our maps and laid out names uh, actually for just, we didn't know what the maps were going to be, but all right, this is going to be a four player map that supports CTF or, you know, this is going to be a five player, six player map that supports uh, Team Slayer or something like that. And I gave all those maps names and uh, a lot of those names actually stuck in the map designs too, like, uh, let's see, uh, Lockout was one of the very, very first ones we did. I know everybody loves Lockout. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, Lockout, uh, Ivory Tower, Midship, Ascension, those were four of the very first ones that within like six months we had them all up and playable and they basically, they didn't change that much over the course of the project. Um, and three of those four names actually stuck. The only one of those four that changed was uh, Ivory Tower, when we did it on paper originally, was originally called um, Cyclotron. Cyclotron, thank you. Cyclotron. Yeah, and then, we, and then we made this like fancy penthouse suite at the top of a tower and we're like, that looks nothing like a cyclotron, so we had to change it. So we uh, we renamed Ivory Tower in honor of uh, what everyone called uh, Marty O'Donnell's uh, pri private office. We called him <laughs> called it the Ivory Tower. So uh, that was how uh, that map got That's its name. So awesome. Speaking That's of those original paper designs, you've been uh, so kind to dig into the archives and give us a few of those, which I think a lot of us are going to be seeing for the first time if you want to switch over to uh, some of these map designs oh. and talk a little bit about how midship <laughs> changed and, and some of these maps changed from the paper design. So th this one, uh, this one's a lot of fun. This is Midship, and uh, this is actually, Midship is the very first map that I ever designed, like put pen to paper and designed, um, which is, th this is, uh, this is Chris Carney's version of, he took it over and uh, redid my layout, but this was Chris Carney's version of the layout, and it, it, Midship is just blows my mind that it became so popular, I think, I think it became one of the most popular among all the uh, competitive players also. Yeah, it was the only map, I think, in Halo history to serve every tournament game type. So free-for-all, oddball, king of the hill, assault, slayer, yep. uh, everything. So it's, uh, yeah, it became pretty universal. When I, when I was working on uh, midship originally, I had this, uh, my spec called for, basically I wanted to have a two-on-two -two CTF map because I figured, all right, we're going online, but there's going to be a bunch of people who still don't have the internet back then. This was a while ago. <laughs> so, uh, uh -oh. so anyway, I was like, all right, but CTF is so much fun, and I'd love for people just playing four-way split screen to be able to play a CTF game. So I'm going to do a two-on-two -two CTF map. So the basic idea on this map was that you'd have two flags uh, basically across a chasm looking at each other, and they were so close that the, the guy, the one guy goes on offense, one stays on defense, and the guy that's back there on defense can still participate on offense, so he can lob grenades across, he can still shoot, um, shoot across. Yeah, and that's, this is 
pretty close to what the final map ended up as, and we did this like two years before the game shipped, actually. That's awesome. And we've also got, um, also got an early ascension, which similarly, similarly to midship does look um, a bit different just in terms cool. of the map layout. This was actually a rework of Ascension, because uh, Ascension, which uh, we're showing off here and uh, turned out to be a really popular map, Ascension almost got cut, because when we first did Ascension, it was really not any fun. Um, they had a similar problem to Lockout, which is that every, all of the traffic routed through that dish in the middle, and there was no way to get to any of the uh, three satellites without going through that dish. So the map just wasn't working. So I, th this is actually my drawing when I got my hands on it, and I was proposing some changes to kind of make it work and adding these uh, peripheral lower paths around the outside, which weren't there originally. Um, the, the leap of faith was, uh, real, you know, you can see, I wanted to have this spot where you jump down. If you look up in the left, you see it says fog right there. Yeah. That's some awesome drawing. Nice fog. So <laughs> the idea like was for the leap of faith, actually, that you'd run up and you'd look down and all you would see was a bank of fo fog and then you just have to jump down through the fog and hope you landed it. So that was what that was uh, <laughs> indicating. So yeah, this one, yeah, after we made these changes, it uh, t totally turned around the map, so uh, got a lot better. And this, this, uh, this next one that we're gonna go to right after this slide is I think a last minute edition. We just got this paper design in this morning and I'm sure it's also uh, a fan favorite. Oh, Zanzibar. <laughs> so Z Zanzibar, Zanzibar's kind of interesting, and, and just a side note, this panel's interesting for me because th these guys all have uh, stuff they're talking about about the product, and they just asked me to come here and reminisce about Halo 2 development days, so this is kind of fun. Um, Zanzibar was really interesting. What happened with uh, Zanzibar is um, after w we did an E3 where we showed off uh, single player New Mombasa, and then the following year, um, about maybe two months before E3, uh, the uh, Pete Parsons and Jason Jones came to me and they said, hey Max, we, uh, we have a problem. We're, the single player is so on fire, we have so many problems, we can't afford to spend any time working on anything for E3 for the campaign. So we need you to show off something multiplayer for E3. So uh, I was, uh, okay, sure. So I said, all right. We started looking at what we had and we realized that we really didn't have anything that we thought was sexy enough for E3. So we kind of scrambled. Um, all of a sudden, we had a bunch of additional resources to make something. So we sort of scrambled. And this is the, the paper design for Zanzibar that we did. Um, and we built it this whole thing start to finish in less than two months, specifically for E3, with all the crazy dynamic elements and all that stuff. No, none of those features were supported up to that point. All the dynamic lighting from the wheel turning, all that stuff we crammed in at the last minute. Um, took it to E3 and had it playable. Um, and we had a great show. And wh one of the reasons for that one of the things that I really wanted to do with Halo was really focus on adding game modes that were round-based, uh, sort of single objectives, so like single flag CTF, single bomb assault, that sort of thing. Um, so we looked at it and we said, this is a kind of fun game mode, but we don't have a map that's really designed around, you know, around this kind of round-based single objective. Um, so that's where we came up with Zanzibar and really kind of went to town on it. Um, so yeah, this is nice. cool. Awesome. Thank you, Max. I think uh, I'd love to move now forward uh, and fast forward 10 years later to designing Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer. And one of the coolest things that I heard when I first heard this project uh, was, was in the works. Not only did I not believe that we were going to pull it off, but um, also hearing that we had commissioned you and your team to look at Halo 2 Multiplayer and say, what are the things that you would have liked to have done 10 years ago that might not have been able to? And uh, also hearing that your team now has that opportunity is pretty exciting too. Yeah, so yeah, there are, there are a couple of things. Um, at the start of the project, I sat down with uh, Dave Mertz here and the rest of the team, and we talked a bunch about stuff, but uh, I'll probably let uh, Mertz speak to some of the things that we've added that I wanted to add back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Max. Um, I think we're going to throw up, uh, throw up the bill. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to get a uh -huh. little, uh, little bit more of a sense. So what you guys at. are going to see, um, we're, we're going to have loaded here. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks. <laughs> What you guys are going to see uh, is the latest development build. Uh, this is this is this is uh, the build in the raw. So any hot apologies. off the presses. Yeah, really yeah. hot off the presses, <laughs> literally. Um, so you know, if any strangers or issues, we apologize. Uh, but no, this is this is the build. So. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so this crowd is in for a real treat. Uh, we showed this at E3, but you guys are going to get the uh, really the most detailed walkthrough of the map, <laughs> uh, the first detailed walkthrough of the map. Um, so you know, like Max said, um, when we started the project, there was a huge number of decisions that, were, that we had to make. Um, you know, we sat down with Max. We really went over the things that worked, the things that didn't work, kind of his wish list items, those types of things. Um, really, the first thing was the hardest decision was what six maps. And as you can see, Ascension here uh, made the cut, obviously. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of walk through the map a little bit. Um, so first of all, you guys will notice the updated visuals. Um, now, I'm going to talk to the visuals just for, a, just for a little bit as it relates to the design, and then we'll kind of get into some of the wish list items and some of the, the, the other stuff that kind of uh, was the result of the feedback um, that we got from talking with Max, as, as well as just all the research and everything that we do, listen to the community and listen to the fans. Um, Obviously, you know, with, with Xbox One, uh, oh, sorry, thank you. Um, with, the, with the Xbox One, we're able to do an incredible amount of uh, visual fidelity. Um, but there's a challenge there. Uh, we found very quickly early on in the project that we're sitting here, we're making the map super sexy, we're really pimping them out. But what happens is you start to get a lot of, a lot of visual noise. Um, and one of some of the, our basic uh, kind of really design goals are that any change cannot affect gameplay. So that even goes for visuals. Um, the things that visuals can do is they can really start to muddy really the gameplay. And well, how does that happen? Well, target acquisition. Um, just a lot of noise and level. Um, people not knowing paths or paths, those types of things. Uh, so you know, that was, that was a, a big challenge we really tackled, we tackled head on. Um, so let me kind of point out some of the, kind of some of the key visuals here. Um, and a lot of it really deals with uh, just really, we wanted to just immerse you even more in, in the levels. Um, you can see here. <laughs> So what our artists did here, um, obviously we have a beautiful skybox with the halo ring rotating around it. Um, they basically created a, a halo ring that's to scale in game. Um, and that's what you're seeing right now. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. Um, I'll can you, can you drop down there and run around? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> show us, prove it. Totally. You can totally do that. Uh, what I can do is give you guys a, a much better view of it, just to kind of give you a fantastic view. Jump on the how much work to see how good you are. How much work went into this? So we're over here by the leap of faith. Oh, I'll jump. Okay, I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't really realize just how incredible the, the visuals are until you. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Huge, huge uh, just hats off to our artists. They've done a fantastic job. Um, so obviously there's a lot of other things you guys can see, and I'll move through this pretty quickly. Just incredibly detailed uh, terrain, uh, natural features. The uh, forerunner structures are just gorgeous, um, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so let's move on to the gameplay stuff a little bit. Um, you know, when, when we got together and we talked to Max, uh, you know, there were, there were a couple things at a high level that we wanted to do when, with the maps. Um, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of skill that's involved. There's a really nice skill gap in Halo 2. Uh, and people love to know the trick jumps, uh, to know these different paths to do this type of stuff. So what we really tried to make sure uh, was that we maintained those. That was really important. That we maintained all the skill jumps from the, in, in the original maps. Um, in addition, we wanted to add more. Uh, so you know, all, your, all your classic skill jumps and those types of things will be in the map, um, including some additional skill jumps. Now, this is, this is a, pretty, a pretty standard one. And then just really small things, because the, the, really the most, the most important thing here is that every single change, no matter how small, has got to add to the gameplay. It has absolutely got to add to the gameplay. Um, every single thing that we did to the game had to be a home run. Anything that was 50-50, anything that was kind of like, meh, no, cut. Um, everything had to move the game forward. So just simple things like this. For those of you that are familiar with the, the sniper rifle platform here, so you know you could drop down here before, right? Well, what we wanted to do was, for skilled players, they can get up here from another route. So we've seen a lot of really, truly skilled players actually jump up that path, flank their opponent, and it's just fantastic. It's just really subtle things like that have really added a lot to the game. Um, I'm gonna go through here and show you guys a couple other really, really important paths that we have changed. Because we know everyone really wants to see the map. You kind of see all the changes that we've done. So I'm really excited to kind of show you guys that stuff. So here's the Banshee platform. Again, fantastic view of the Vista. So something that really kind of came out of the feedback with Max when we talked about, um, about the map was the Skybridge does not really get used a lot for obvious reasons. Um, it's really kind of one big circular loop, travel loop. Um, there's not a lot of cover. 
So, and when you're out there in the middle of the sky bridge, your, uh, your options are really limited. You can't really bail out very easily. So what we thought we'd do is we, we thought we'd do a couple of really su subtle things. So everyone always thought that the connection here was kind of awkward. So what this did is we added some additional space here, we did some modifications, and it just played fantastic. Um, people liked the additional space to fight. They liked being able to approach the Banshee platform in, in a different way. Um, and then most importantly, one thing that, one reason that people really didn't use the Skybridge a lot was they, they would get sniped from Big Tower, and that's fine. Um, and what's really important about all these changes is that we, we've got to maintain the original spirit of the map the original gameplay of the map, the original spirit of the map. The map, Halo 2 in general, and this map in particular, is really about the zone control, about controlling the, the big tower, about controlling the, the, the small tower. So we don't want to take that away from players, but we want to give the, the, the other players a chance to counter, to counter uh, the people that hold these power positions. So you can see we've added some additional cover while running along here from the big tower. And then really one of the biggest changes um, is we added this entire center kind of platform structure here. And it's fantastic. People really get a chance to kind of fight in here. It gives them a lot more tactical advantages uh, or tactical strategies that they can do. Um, and then, of course, this was originally uh, an original skill jump. And of course, I botched it. Um, that's how you can tell it's a live build when the, uh, the lead designer uh, is not paying attention and botches a uh, skill jump. And I'll probably <laughs> hear about that from QA on Monday. Um, so what we did is we, we made this skill jump uh, a little easier. Um, but what's, what's great is we, we noticed the more skillful players are now able to do this jump backwards. They're able to do all this type of stuff. So we haven't taken anything away and we've added stuff, especially for, uh, you know, your, your less skilled players or your more casual players. Um, and by having this additional structure here, it's just really played well. It's so subtle, uh, but it's just really worked out fantastic in terms of adding additional cover when you're trying to approach either way, either approaching the Banshee platform or, or uh, attacking the big tower. Uh, there's a lot of other changes that we did. Um, you know, for instance, there's, there, there weren't not a, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, long range weapons around this area. We added a, a Covenant carbine here. Um, it gives you a little bit to counter the BRs and, and the sniper, uh, the sniper rifle. Let me go up here to the big tower. So I think really one of the biggest things that we identified in this map uh, when, when talking with everyone, getting feedback, with talking with Max is just the dominance of long range combat in this level. Um, so there's, there's a number of things that we, we, we tried to do to, uh, to kind of to help along with this. Uh, we, we adjusted spawns, we added additional cover. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes though, and, and the, the thing that I'm most excited about is we've really tried to add a lot of dynamic elements into the maps. Um, and what's neat about this? Wait, are you? Have you shown this yet? No. Have this is this is the this first is time anyone's seen this. Are you sure this is okay, Dennis? Wait, I didn't think you were going to show this, Dave. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you, do you guys want to see this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know we were showing this well, either. We, but we there goes. Can't pull back yeah, now. Now we're showing it. Gone. We're showing it now. <laughs> so. You know, when talking with Max, one of the wish listings for Max, and Max can, can verify this, is he wished that they had done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wished about. that they had done a lot of the more uh, dynamic stuff, like in like in Zanzibar. You know, the bridges, the wheel, those types of things. Uh, those people find those things exciting. Um, so something that we we've done with with this map in particular is um, we have added an energy shield in the middle. <laughs> Grenade. So, not only is it gorgeous, it blocks gunfire, it blocks projectiles, and what's really fantastic about this is, well, when you get into kind of cough in the middle of this map, it gets insane. I mean, it's like Thunderdome inside there. But what's really important about this is there, there are three, there are three um, control panels around the map. Um, and it, and when, when it comes up, players can basically activate this and they can provide cover in the middle for their teammates, um, whether they're running around it or whether they're inside of it. And what that really does is it gives players just another really interesting tactical advantage that they can do. Um, and it's, it's just been fantastic to watch people hit, this, hit the shield and then you know, assault the big tower, assault the small tower. Um, it's just been really, really exciting to see that type of stuff. And this is really, um, to go at a high level, this is the type of stuff that we, we're doing across all the maps, even though we haven't announced what, what the maps are yet. Yeah. But you can expect to see this type of stuff. You know, really going, taking Zanzibar and spreading that throughout, you know, kind of, kind of levels, um, as well as, you know, going just above and beyond things like plasma coils and those types of things, really trying to up the interactivity and stuff in the levels. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you. I think... I think I'd love to go right from there talking about how important it is um, maintaining you know, everything about the core Halo 2 experience. I'd love to get right into talking about the sandbox and, and how, uh, how, how you did that with the challenges associated with an updated engine, uh, working at 60 frames and stuff like that. 
Yeah, yeah, I can speak to that. Um, when, when we're, uh, do you have the, yeah, we're starting. Oh, excellent, okay, perfect. Um, so when we're discussing the gameplay, what we're really talking about is the sandbox. Um, and for those that aren't familiar with the term, um, the sandbox encompasses all the mechanics that form the core gameplay, really the heart of the game. Um, everything outside of the levels. Uh, so we're talking player movement, incredibly important in Halo 2. Um, weapons, equipment, and vehicles. Now most importantly also, it includes all the game modes, variants, and related options. And that is something that we have really, really expanded upon. We've added a, a huge number of game modes and, and related game options. Um, so really when, when all this stuff kind of comes about, um, we come up with our goals. And the goal for, the H, the H, for, for Halo 2 uh, MP anniversary um, was to recreate the original H2 sandbox um, with targeted enhancements. And that's a very, a very, very important phrase there, is targeted enhancements. You heard me talk about when, uh, this, this issue when I was running around Ascension. We took an incredible amount of care, not just recreating the sandbox and the levels in the game, but also vetting every single change, no matter how minor, that went into the game. And uh, I, I, I think it definitely shows in, in the final product. Um, I think all the playtesters would agree. Um, so out of the goals, to kind of speak more to your, more to your, uh, your question, Andy, um, design pillars uh, really come out of what those, what those goals are, what that, that particular goal is I just talked about. And really, our, our design pillar can really be summed up in a, in a, very, simple, in a very simple sentence. Um, all, of our all of our design decisions must promote teamwork, tactics, and game mode custom customizability. Um, it's really as simple as that. Um, and everything that we do, every change that we make, whether it be in the levels or whether it be in the sandbox that we're talking about, um, everything gets tested against that goal, against those pillars. Um, so there were a huge number of challenges naturally, um, you know, with recreating the H2 sandbox. Um, we had to recreate, I mean, we had to recreate everything. Um, you know, it, it is, everything is based on Halo 2 retail auto update three. So that's, that, that was our base. Um, and uh, we had to recreate the movement behaviors. Uh, that's the speed, the jump. I know we spent weeks just trying to get the jump right, trying to get that, just that perfect apex for the loft, the lofty jump. Um, you know, dual wield, very first thing we did, probably the first day of starting on the project was we started implementing dual wield. Um, and uh, I, I, I'd have to say once dual wield got in, that's when it really started to feel like feel like Halo 2. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a really neat yeah, day. Um, <laughs> first time I got uh, dual wheeled up. Um, the Elite. The Elite is awesome. Um, you know, we had, to, we had to bring him back in. You know, this, this, was, this was a character we yeah. had to... Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's big. We had to add in this entire character that had not been in the game, you know, for quite a long time, as well as, you know, visually update him and uh, really kind of fix a lot of the issues that people had run into previously. Um, and then, you know, the really big, the biggest thing is recreating the game modes and options. Um, you know, that's a huge amount of work, as anyone will tell you, just a huge, huge amount of work. Um, so as far as kind of the decisions um, on improvements and additions, um, we really had to kind of challenge ourselves to find a way to improve Halo 2 multiplayer. Um, you know, some would say it's, you know, it's perfect. Um, and, I, and I agree with that to a certain extent. So uh, uh, we really did very targeted changes. And, um, you know, I talked about that before. And again, I talked about how all that was vetted against our design pillars. Cool. One, 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 thing, one thing, Andy, that's yeah, really yeah. interesting to me about that, having been, uh, you know, in charge of all these different things, these map designs and a lot of this game modes and everything else, it's just crazy. I, I've come to the conclusion that it's far, far more difficult to recreate something to this exacting standard yes. than it is to actually just do it the first time around. Because yeah. the first time around when I wanted Absolutely. to put a weapon down or change a spawn point or timing or anything, I just made the change. Now these guys, every single change, they have to go back and think, think about the consequences and how it relates to my original uh, it's a haphazard decision making. <laughs> and uh, it's, it, it's a monumental task and I, I think it, you know, I tell these guys all the time, I'm like, I don't understand how much, like I didn't anticipate how much work this would be, um, but testament to the team that they're doing such an amazing job at it. It's coming together really, really well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Play tests are so much fun, yeah. I think it really speaks to that point we talked about earlier about Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer being an upgrade, not just a remake. And I think the fact that David and, and you and your team are so in tune with what those changes mean to every aspect of the gameplay I think is important. And, and I know the fans are really going to appreciate that. Uh, along with that, and talking about Max, how much work is required, how important is 
testing. I mean, we get when we get builds here, you know, all the pro players back home and, and Frank O'Connor when we're lucky, we're all play testing every day. And it's incredible to see map geometry change and how the sight lines tweak and the mm -hmm. feedback coming in from all different areas and then we see these maps evolve. How important is testing on, on your side? Oh, testing's critical. I mean, especially when you're trying to nail the, the, the feel mm -hmm. of, of Halo 2. I mean, it is, it is one of the, probably the most important thing that we do outside of actually implementing the game, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, I was sitting here talking to some folks the other day. Um, we were only a few weeks into uh, really the project, uh, maybe two, three weeks. And we already had the, the core game up and running, and we had Ascension, the, a very rough version of Ascension we, we brought over, um, you know. Uh, and uh, from that point, we started playing. And we have been playing every single day since that two or three weeks into the project, sometimes twice a day. Um, when uh, we want to test both the sandbox and levels in the same day. But I mean, that, that is what we have been doing every single day, uh, and we'll continue to do that up until we ship. And in addition, on the 343 and Microsoft side, um, yourself and everyone else, you guys are testing. And oh, yeah. uh, between, between those two things, I think we have an, probably the most insane amount of test coverage that I've ever seen on, yeah. on, on a single project, e even on just our section of the game. So it's, it's been really fantastic. Yeah, you can ask Dennis. Uh, I'm testing probably eight hours a day and not doing anything <laughs> yeah. else. Yeah, um, he's not joking. I mean, Andy's been one of the key people that, you know, the whole pro team, actually, that works at 343 comes yeah. and they play yeah. regularly. Yeah, fantastic job. That's that, a and the feedback is critical, right? Because there's a lot of those details that, that Max is mentioning trying to create is so difficult that these, you know, all the pro team and the hardcore fans out there, they know what those are. And so they can really point to, to where they exist and, and it really helps certain affinity kind of tune the map to make sure this, this feels like Halo 2. That, that's a rough job you've got, Andy. <laughs> oh, no, it's really tough. I, I'm surprised I still have the job, but I just write it off as testing each day. <laughs> just four v four matches so, on Ascension. Yeah. So, so speaking of testing, we have uh, just an uh, uh, outside witness. We have one of our lead testers in the audience on the project. Hey, hey Ryan, why don't you stand up? Woo! Yeah, Ryan. Woo! Ryan Fox. So, Ryan, Ryan, tell us, how, uh, how often do we play test? <laughs> cool. Thanks, Ryan. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> I just want to say at 343, we never actually have a problem filling up our play tests. We usually yeah. actually have to turn some people away. So That's uh, been that's, a problem lately, yeah. especially as it gets polished. That's good. Oh. Yeah, and, and, yeah, the last thing I'll say about that is just coming into uh, the project after, you know, on the test side, just giving feedback uh, from the community team feedback, coming in several months into the project, when we fired it up for the first time, and just, I mean, the Halo 2 jump is a good example across the board of how, of how the game feels, and, you know, it's... I think everyone's going to be uh, pretty excited to get their hands on it. I'd like to, we have a, a little bit of time left. I want to move through a few more things and a few uh, announcements. Uh, let's talk a little bit um, about game types. Max, you talked before about Zanzibar and how uh, one flight CTF you know, is, is perfect on that game type. And something that you and I talked about is how uh, Halo 2 obviously was the introduction of a lot of those round-based game types uh, that was you know, never before seen and not too common in console shooters. Um, so let's talk a little about the game types and, and how, how big was that? Because there's not only are, do they play so well, but there's quite a few one-sided objective game types within Halo 2. Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll let Merch speak to the games. As far as the philosophy on that, I, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy that I, I really care about accessibility. It comes from doing a lot of the UI, the user interface and all that stuff. And uh, I really want everyone to be focused on a single goal, all headed in the same direction, all on offense, defense, whatever. So that's kind of where that all came about, but uh, Merch, you want to talk more about what we're actually doing? Yeah, yeah, so you can see some of the returning favorites here. Um, you know, again, every, we, we have uh, brought over every single original game mode uh, in, into the new uh, Halo 2 uh, anniversary, um, which is really exciting. And um, going back to kind of the, the goals and design pillars I talked about, um, we, we targeted a bunch of other game modes, too, uh, that we wanted to add that really kind of fed into the whole, uh, the spirit of teamwork, uh, the spirit of tactics. Um, and all that type of stuff. Um, so Ricochet, we, uh, we brought over Ricochet, was one of the first things that we thought of, one of the first games we thought of that, to bring over from, uh, for, in this case, from H4 into H2. And it just plays fantastic. 
Um, Ricochet was incredibly fun in Halo 4, but now with dual wield uh, SMGs, uh, with everything going on, and with the kind of the movement speed, the more kind of deliberate um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, just the more deliberate, deliberate movement speed and everything, um, it's, just, it's just really, really shown, I think, even, even more in Halo 2 than, than, it, than it did in H4. Um, something else that's really exciting is we have Race. Race is back. Yeah. <laughs> With a huge number of game mode options. You know, I, I, had, I had to race in Halo 2, but I had to cut it, so I'm glad it's back. Yep. Um, and that kind of goes back to a lot of the, like, the wish list. We kind of call it director's cut. That's kind of really how we treated the whole, the, this whole particular project is treat like a director's cut, almost like, you know, Halo 2.5 or Halo 2 plus plus is really how we kind of really thought about it. And everyone's really kind of glommed onto that and uh, really just been excited. And that's just what everyone has just been so excited about is, you know, we're going to take Halo 2, which is fantastic, and do everything that we can to make it better. Um, so, uh, you know, another, another fan favorite, not just a fan favorite, but one that was really, uh, you know, created by the fans and made popular. Um, you know, and, and is now you know formalized in uh, Halo 2 uh, multiplayer uh, anniversary. So SWAT, um, and here's one that I'm really, really excited about: Infection. Um, so this is old school Halo 2 Infection. You can swap out your weapons. You can do all types of customizations to it. Uh, we really went with old uh, old school Infection with this, um, and everyone's just been having an absolute blast with it. Cool. That's good. Well, thank you, David. I think you mentioned the director's cut, and that's, I think, if, if we want to, we're running close on time, but if we want to talk about uh, both Max and David, some of the director's cut uh, items that we do have um, on this list on this right-hand side are, are pretty cool. Yeah. You, you, you want to speak to this? Yeah, I can. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, like, like, like Annie said, we're running a little short on time, so I want to I get through this stuff pretty quickly. Um, so improvements and additions. We talked about you know, modernizations, and you know, everyone always gets a little scary. That means we're going to pull stuff over from other games or other, uh, you know, other titles. Uh, modernizations thus just means really taking advantage of a lot of stuff that we have now that we didn't have 10 years ago. Uh, improved, improved spawns, um, you know, more robust feedback systems, uh, you know, and really more power to customize game modes than we ever did before. Um, I want to talk a little bit about weapons. Uh, so really, I think a really good example of one of those director's cut or one of those uh, kind of wish list things was the assault rifle. Uh, the assault rifle was, you know, wasn't in the, in the multiplayer game. Um, so what really worked out well with that was we, were, we felt like we were really lacking. When, you know, when we go back and we get all this feedback that I talked about, we looked at the weapons and went, you know, we could really use some more mid-range weapon options. Yep. And the assault rifle just slid right in there. In fact, the, the assault rifle is actually on ascension in the big tower uh, on, the, on, the, on the second floor. Um, and it, it's just worked out really well to really uh, give players something to kind of balance against the, the BR and the sniper rifle and even the SMG to a certain degree. Um, so something else that's kind of really exciting is uh, we, we've tuned the magnum. Uh, we've tuned it uh, across, across all the weapons as well as in, in dual wield. Um, and, and tuning just means we've upped the damage a little bit. Um, and it, it's actually really, really worked out well. It's worked out really well. <laughs> really well. And we, we know it's been working great when we see people uh, actually select that option when, in weapon sets. When people actually use it, we know it's working great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just going, man, people aren't using the Magnum. What jump, can we do to if people use it? Yeah, let's on the Mongoose. Um, so one thing I want to talk about uh, is the Mongoose. So the Mongoose was a, a major feature that Max wanted in Halo 2. Um, and we, we put it in. And it's just been fantastic to have the Mongoose running around in Halo 2. Um, there's some additional vehicles and stuff that we're going to talk about, I think, at a later date, Dennis. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I think there is, there is one that we, I definitely want to talk about now. Did you want to show this one? Yeah, you want to show Let's something? Let's show yeah, this one. Tell, tell us a little bit about this. Tell us a little bit about it, David. So what's better than a mongoose? <laughs> a mongoose with guns. Yep. Nice. Yeah. We talk about changes that have got to be an overwhelming success. I can think of no other change than adding guns to the, the mongoose. Yes, yeah. that's true. Um, plus, it has like the coolest name ever. Um, and speaking of incredibly uh, successful um, uh, additions, um, it's, it's kind of hard to play Gun Goose CTF without a Gun Goose. So that's a new game mode that we're doing. Um, something completely new to Halo no one's ever done before. You are basically on a Gun Goose and you're playing CTF. And it's one of the, I think, one of the most fun experiences that I've had in any Halo game ever. It's insane, especially when you see a fleet of Gun Geese flying, <laughs> over, <laughs> flying over a hill. Um, it's just been really fantastic, really fun. 
Awesome, yeah, we, we just shooting that around is pretty awesome. And, and the, what it adds to the sandbox is really great too, right? Because you, you have the ghosts and, and the hogs with gunners running around, but to see people kind of lone wolfing and uh, just flying over hills through the, uh, on the gun goose is And you can awesome. still have the passenger on it, so you've got effectively three guns, maybe yeah. four if you'll do willing. <laughs> That's it's, right. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's... Uh, <laughs> is, uh, You're welcome. It, it is definitely a, a fun vehicle to use. Something I didn't get to cover that uh, I, I wanted to quickly cover is what role uh, concept plays um, in, in the design. For example, we just saw a little sketch of the Gun Goose. Uh, on uh, on the, a project like this where uh, you know, Halo 2, like we said, is, is so defined of how that multiplayer needs to play, how does concept start playing in when you want to bring in new things? Um, in, term, in terms of concept, um, you know, really after design and art get together, and we kind of come up with our general visuals and our themes and stuff, um, we really just start concepting right away. Um, and it's incredibly important. It's uh, hugely integral. Yeah. Uh, we actually, yeah, I mean, we, we don't do anything art-wise without uh, concepting it in some form or fashion these days, which is radically different than the way we used to do it back in the day. But uh, I, think, I think you might be trying to yeah. lead up to something, and we should show some. What's, what's this? Concept. These are some of our concepts. So what you guys are seeing here is uh, a piece of concept from a map we haven't announced yet. Any ideas um, what map? Yeah. Have you guessed, any? guessed it yet? Well, well it, oh, this is yell it if you know guys. it. Come on. I this can't hear you. That's right, guys. That's Coag is right. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. That was a setup. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, we had to have some place to drive the gun geese. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> gun geese seat Lots of gun geese. Yeah, so Coagulation is officially announced as the, the, one of the remastered maps, the second announced remastered map. It'll be available in a Halo 2 anniversary multiplayer. And I think David will have a lot more to share on kind of uh, the reimagining of Coag later this summer. Uh, we can kind of dig into yeah. everything that's being done to that map. I think fans are going to like uh, the new way that it plays. Uh, we've only got uh, about eight minutes, but I'd love to do some quick Q&A. Um, if any of you might have questions, you can line up at the microphones, and we can uh, get to those quickly. Oh, and if a guardian wants to help us get that started right away, that'd be awesome. <laughs> no. Oh man, that's a line. <laughs> Good stuff. Hi. Uh, hey. So will we be able to use different game sandboxes with different levels? So like match Halo 2 sandbox with like Halo 3 maps? Do no. you handle that one? So the answer to that question is no. The games will play as they originally played. So you won't be able to take one sandbox and apply it to another. But you know, you'll be able to enjoy the games as they existed when they launched. Um, I was wondering, are you guys going to be bringing back a Forge World to the game? And if so, is it going to be like multiple maps or one big map? You mean specifically Forge World within... Uh, or like a Forge game mode in it? Yeah, well, so Forge is, uh, Dennis can correct me if I'm wrong, but Forge is confirmed for Halo 3, Halo 4, and Halo 2 anniversary. Uh, so you'll have all the canvases that you had. Thanks, man. Right. Awesome, it, thank it's, you. A, it's a huge deal. I mean, this is the first time people will be able to Forge. In, in, in Halo 2, the Halo 2 sandbox. And when combined with all the game options and everything we've done, it is just really an enhanced experience. It's are fantastic. We, I didn't know we were talking about that. <laughs> well, well we're gonna we are now, right? <laughs> later. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. But uh, yeah, so uh, any canvases that you remember in Halo 3 and Halo 4 will be available uh, in the Master Chief collection as well. Yeah. Hey, hey. Um, my favorite thing was the Easter eggs in the campaign in Halo 2, like the Scarab Gun. I was wondering if things like that were going to be coming back. Yeah, so definitely. You'll, the existing Easter eggs are there, and I think Max is... So I, I like these new achievements that we're thinking about, too. And it might be kind of interesting to think about maybe we should have some achievements based around those Easter eggs as well, and maybe some new ones. Yeah. 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 That would be a good idea. <laughs> Something we should think about, Max. Something <laughs> we should think about. Hey. Oh. Hey, uh, one of my favorite parts about the Halo games is that you have the ability to customize your own Halo Spartan. And I know in Halo 1 you can only choose one color, but uh, Halo 2 and 3 are similar, and Halo 4 has a bunch load of armor. Uh, how is that going to work across all four games, seeing that all customizations are pretty different? So uh, that's a great question. and. Uh, 
I'll get back to the idea of what the unified experience that we're thinking about for this game is. Uh, we basically want to bring together customization in a really interesting way for this, uh, this particular game. However, the multiplayer experience and a lot of the customization that feeds into that, we're going to be talking a lot more about that at Gamescom, so uh, we can uh, have more to reveal at that time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, regarding the cancel button in Halo 2, are combos like BXR and BXB going to be in? Yeah, so the, the experience, as Dennis said, is, is, is largely as you, remember, as you remember it. And uh, like David said, so post auto update 3 for Halo 2, what that means is your melee uh, damage is higher, your plasma grenade times are shorter, and everything like you remember it. So in Halo 2 Classic, we will have uh, things like the button combos, but in Halo 2 Anniversary, uh, those won't exist. Uh, um, this is from the top question on Reddit from the user uh, Toonzova. Hey, Toonzova. <laughs> Will there be a bigger Forge budget in Halo 3, 4, and Anniversary? I don't think we're talking Forge yeah. just yet. No. Yeah, there's, we'll talk a little bit more about that most likely at either San Diego Comic Con or Gamescom. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hi. Um, one of the favorite things I liked about Halo was the fact that you guys do have like an extended universe. So how is it going deciding that we're going to go into the Arbiter's backstory? I'm sorry. Could you, I didn't hear. Oh, you're good. How, how is it uh, how to tying into the Arbiter's backstory and the larger fiction associated with the entire Master Chief collection? Uh, so for terminal videos, uh, you will find out a little bit more about the Arbiter. And there's also some cool links to Halo 5 in there. Um, you know, I mean, I hate going into too much detail, but there's a lot of really good information there, a lot that you don't know that you're going to learn. So. Cool, thank you. Hey, what's up? Hi. Um, so I know it's a few years in the future, but will the anniversary theme that y'all guys are having, will that continue into Halo 3 or future Halos? I or is it going to stop at Halo 2? I think right now we're just focusing on Halo 2 Anniversary um, and, and a lot of other projects, Halo 5 Guardians and, and everything else apart. So right now just that focus is on Halo 2 Anniversary. Don't forget, though, I mean, these games are running at 60 frames a second, and that's a huge, huge change. Um, to really see it in motion, I think, is, is pretty amazing. And a lot of these games really look beautiful when you see them on the Xbox One running at that frame rate. So um, yeah. cool. I, think, I think you'll appreciate the, the up feel of all the games, actually. We've got time for probably one or two more. All right. Um, by chance, will theater mode be coming back? So I think, yeah. yeah, go yeah, ahead. So you guys want to take this? Theater mode, yep. It is going to be coming back where it existed before. You'll be able to use it again. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think this is going to be the last question. If you guys do have any questions for us, uh, you can swing by our booth. Uh, the 343 and Halo booth at 1.30. We're going to have a panel signing where we're all, all going to be hanging out. Uh, you can ask us questions. You can get a free limited edition poster that you can only get there. Um, and uh, so this will be the last question. But if you have more, please swing by and say hi to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of my favorite things about Halo Anniversary, the first one, um, was that the cutscenes were complete reskin. They weren't like different models. And so uh, you mentioned how you're working with Blur to make like <laughs> What we saw in the trailer was it's not the exact same cutscene. It's kind of redone. But will there be an inclusion in the game of like the reskin cutscenes, or are you only doing the blur stuff? So for blur, everything that they're going to be showing is going to be pre-rendered, as the, for the original, like essentially the exact same cinematics, but using uh, updated uh, models. No, that that won't actually exist. So it'll only be the classic. Uh, Cinematics, and then you'll have an awesome pre-rendered version that's going to be like cinematic quality. It'll it'll feel like a movie to you. Thanks. Yeah. So I want to thank Rooster Teeth. I want to thank everyone here up on the panel. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Really appreciate. It. Thank you, guys. I want to thank, thank all, you. Yeah, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon. And also, if, uh, <laughs> also, uh, certain if any has a booth at the show, we're launching. And our you've game, got a game. Uh, you've got a game. Yep, Age of Booty Tactics. So uh, come by, check us out. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs>
destroyed. The Covenant, I will Supreme Commander. The Prophets named me Arbiter. And your Master Chief calls me Fred. What will you call me when you learn the truth of what I have done?